could even have Saginaw. And he was voted in. I feel like my constitutional rights was taken away when they told me, I elect this person, this person, this person, and then you come in and tell me, you, you, you don't have enough common sense to vote a certain person in. That's ridiculous, man. And then you sit up here and say, you know, Mr. Mays, you can't talk. I'm done. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next speaker, Madam Clark. Our next speaker is Pastor Alan Gilbert. Pastor Gilbert. Good evening. Good evening, Councilman Kincaid, and to the council of this city, and to the citizens of this city, to the mayor in his absence. I have been here in July this year. 40 years I've been here. I came from a little town in Kentucky on the Ohio River, about 45,000 people called Orangeboro, Kentucky. And I hated that place when I left that town. I hated it, Sister Poplar, because I was coming to the big city, to Flint, Michigan. <laughs> Flint was known all over this world. Yes, it was. When I was a little bitty boy, my uncle went to Ford at River Ridge, and then the other uncle came to Flint and got hired before I was born in Chivy in the Hole. I just want to say that I had not been very proud of you all up until today. I appreciate each and every one of you because each one of you brings something a little bit different to the table <laughs> that all things may work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. We have a purpose. And I know many of us, and I did not like the EM either. And I still don't like the EM being here. But I respect Donnie Early because for the first time, you guys put a little heat on him. And that's what he needed because he's concerned as well. I don't like much of what he says and what he presents to us, but he's here. And I wanted you to know that, is that if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And I know that there have been some differences as you as council people, President Kincaid, I respect you. I don't like everything that you do. But my wife don't like everything I do either, but she spends my money. <laughs> Councilman Mays, I told you in private and I will tell you in the public, you are a godsend man. Because you want to get things done and you don't mind sticking your neck out. All that I asked of you to do is to continue to conduct yourself the way that you have tonight. Yes. Councilman Davis, I'm very proud of you as well. Yes. God brought you from a mighty long way. You were sent here on purpose. You're not here by accident. And don't ever forget that. You have a mission and you better carry it out. And I'm going to see that you do. Councilman Galloway, you know that I love you, I respect you, and I know you are sincere. I appreciate the way you questioned Mr. Early. I appreciate the way he stood here and conducted himself. He did not maybe necessarily have to do that, but he did because I think some of what he did not know, he found out this evening that there is much work to do. And I believe and I have confidence and I am praying. And you too, Councilman Freeman, I appreciate you as well. I did not like you too well at first, but I watched you. And I didn't judge you by what they said. Thank you. So in my closing, Just Councilman Kincaid, I'm hurrying up. I will. 
is yeah. I want God to bless this council because I want God to bless this city mm -hmm. because I want the citizens of this city to be blessed. And if we work together, it can be done. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Mr. Lathan Jefferson, Mr. Jefferson. I'm Good evening. Speak on two things. One of them, in Flint, we have of the low-income apartments and separate houses stuff. There's 900. 180 of them are not livable, which means they're boarded up and stuff. That means that, uh, uh, well, it's 180, and if they were available for people to live in with even at three people per family, that would be 540 people could live in the city. Now, we jumped up. Uh, our mayor jumped up here and said that we got 20 million to tear down houses. Kids build a, 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 snow, a snow castle. May take them hours, but they can tear it down in two minutes. And that's what's going on here. Another thing with the water, regardless, you were speaking of this water coming from someplace else. Detroit has the United States' finest water. It may, you can bring water from someplace else, you can pump it out of the Flint River. It still is clear, but that doesn't mean that it's any good. And these statistics come from 10 years ago. A lot of people in this know, room know uh, Leo Green, which had, was Green Funeral Homes. He said years back, people in the city of Flint that they did embalming on, their kidneys were hard because of the Flint River. So you better stay with Flint's, uh, Detroit's river water because it's better than what we've been, you're going to get. Now, I want to know how many of you have went down to Detroit and talked to the horse's head at the water department? Probably none of you. You've got emails if you go to Detroit's website, Detroit's DPW, and look and see what the original price of what we have been paying for water and stuff versus what you've been told. Stop talking to the horse's butt. Go talk to his head. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mrs. Clara McClinton. Clara? Mrs. McClinton. Good evening. To the council, the mayor, emergency manager. It's been a while since I've been here. I had a lot of things I wanted to say, but I think for right now, I think I'm going to have to appeal to this council to vote to postpone the seven-point plan. That's the issue before us now. The emergency manager, and we can't say this too much because some people don't get it. The emergency manager is here to replace all of you and the mayor. That's what the law says. You're having your meetings for input. We don't want input. We want y'all to govern. But you can't do that right now. We can't say that too often because the public don't know, and sometimes I believe some of the council don't know the way we conduct ourselves. Now, it was brought up that there's going to be a water report next Thursday. I mean, not next Thursday, but Thursday, April 10th. Why would you vote on a blanket thing with no details right now on the seven-point plan? And we having a water report next month. If you want, you're saying, well, I've heard some of the council say, well, uh, the emergency manager is letting us take classes and preparing us to take over the city. You take over the city by standing up and fighting for what's right. That's how you take over your city. The, the, Emer the, the Michigan Municipal League is not owned by the emergency manager. That's been around for years. You have access to the municipal league. The emergency manager don't have to bring that to you. 
If you want the training, it's yours to get, but you got to take control of your city and stop being led. Take charge. Do f go with your heart. Sure, you're going to learn the rules as you go, but you know we suffering. You know people paying $450 to turn their water on. You know women are losing their kids because they don't have water. Stand up and fight for this city. And I want to tell you something about talking about you ready for the emergency manager to leave and you trying to get ready for him to leave. And I'm going to tell you something that grandmama used to say. All goodbyes ain't gone. <laughs> because he already told us that he's preparing you for the Transition Advisory Board. What is the Transition Advisory Board? You better ask somebody. It is a board that's going to oversee as you take your power back and they have the ability to veto and stop the things that you want to do. And even though the emergency manager has an 18-month term, depending on if you all vote him out, the, the transition board is in perpetuity. You all just got elected, and you could be under dictatorship for your entire term. We do have elected officials, whether you're under emergency manager or whatever you're under, you can step up and speak out for your constituents, for your people. Kildee spoke up when the governor called us Murder Town. Dan Kildee said, you don't call Flint Murder Town. That's my town. I'm going to leave it right there. I urge you to vote to postpone a seven-point plan. Do not be blackmailed into voting for something that you do not know about or believe in. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Mr. Johnny Billinger. Mr. Johnny Billinger. Madam Clerk. Good evening. Hi, I'm John Billings, uh, resident of the city of Flint. My first complaint is I had a water main break in front of my house. I just want y'all to be aware of it that when they came and fixed it, they took my curb out and some of my grass out. Now, I don't know when they're going to get to it and fix it, but I would like the curb back on, the, on where it go and my grass back. Because it seems like they always tearing up tearing up property and then expecting us to fix it. But I still got a little hole in front of it all. Secondly, I've been down here since 5.30. Now, last year, we rushed down here to sign in where we didn't have to wait all day to speak. Now it seems like we've been held hostage again. Now we speak, can't get a reply to what we're saying from nobody till after everybody ain't else that, talk. Ain't that crazy? That might be 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock tonight. Ain't Some of us crazy. got other things to do. Right. Elderlies are down here. They already scared to be out at night. Right. So I was wondering if y'all could some kind of way switch it. Let the speaker Amen. speak and answer him, then go into y'all political arena <laughs> where y'all argue back and forth. So I think... I think the public and the people need to speak first, and y'all respond to us since we paying y'all salary through this city and our taxes and address us first. Then y'all can do what y'all want after y'all address us. Amen. 
Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Mr. James Moore. Mr. Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore. Good evening. Good evening. How you doing? I just wanted to come in to uh, address the body as a whole. Um, I'm here by my birthright. I'm not a citizen of Flint. But by speaking on half of commerce trying to come into the area, trying to do business here, I look forward to being able to come back home. Um, from what I've learned in business, it's, it's, it's hard to go forward if you don't have a business plan. So I do kind of understand the concept of the seven point plan that he's talking about. But by the same token, you got to be able to reach out like I'm doing. I've met with community leaders. First one I met with was Neely. Second was Mays. I've even met with Mrs. I hope I'm pronouncing the right, Van Buren. I've worked, I, 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 met, I, met with, um, I, went, I met with the Flint Police Department. I met with the State Patrol. I've I, 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 I met with Kettering. I've met with uh, uh, Baker. I'm looking forward to meeting with Mott. But my whole point is that I'm saying if I'm doing all this to try to come back home and bring business to the area, you guys have got to do a little bit better job of working together. Because if not, you're going to be in trouble. The sister that addressed earlier was very well correct. The eyes of the nation is on Flint. I don't believe that the United States government is going to give Michigan over to Canada for rental property. That's what you do with things that you don't like. Last I know, you're a part of the lower 48. You do matter. I come here from Colorado looking to come back home, looking to be able to put the, the people of Flint that I knew when I left out of here in 1983, we were the last state champions out of Flint Central. Northern did everything they could to stop us. Northwestern did everything that they could to stop us. Southwestern did everything that they could to stop us. But when we played against Detroit, Persian, we all came together as Flint to make a difference. We got to be able to make a difference. If you want to solve your problems, it's not going to come by way of your seven point plan. You got to put some more points onto it. You got to get some businesses back in here. From Lansing going east, all of your communities have, they don't have General Motors, Toyotas, and all these other big giant major companies. They have small businesses. That's what attract back big businesses. When you make places that look better. The mayor's economic, I, I stopped down and I talked to the mayor's, the mayor's economic and development office. Only buddy I talked to was the mayor's economic and development <laughs> office because he sent me down to the Genesee County Chamber of Commerce. Amen. They told me everything starts from Owasso all the way to Port Huron. Well, the only thing I'm concerned about is what's going on right here in the Flint area. Amen. We used to be one of the largest employers in the area that supported all of the surrounding areas. All of your surrounding areas are doing better than what your city is currently doing now. If you don't get jobs back in this area, you can have a 100-point plan. But if you don't get where people can pay their bills, Amen. it doesn't matter if it's consumer powers, if it's the water bill, or if it's the potholes that I run over to while I'm here. You cannot get nothing done until you get some money back. People need, uh, not that it's on the people, but the, the business community, we got to make it better for them to want to look back. General, general, from my understanding, Kettering owns a lot of property here, but general, general, uh, just under General Motors. General Motors will never look to come back here if you don't clean it up. That's all I have to say from Colorado. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mr. Chester Coburn. Mr. Coburn. Good morning, people on the board. Good evening. Good morning. I, I've been sitting back and observing everybody on this board. I've been self-employed in the city for, since 1981. And what I'm looking at today is a shame all my brothers and sisters sitting up on this channel, <laughs> all my people out here, they put y'all here. But in return, what y'all give them? Disappointment. This disappointment comes because y'all haven't learned how to love each other yet. First of all, you haven't learned how to love yourself yet because y'all can't deal with each other. <laughs> if y'all could sit down and sit down and deal with each other, this city would be all right. Because what we need here like the young man just said, more development coming back in the city. We keep pushing developments out here. I am pouring concrete all around the city. We got over 75 empty buildings right now waiting to be occupied if y'all open up the doors and let them in here. But they're not going to come here as long as you keep confusing them on each other. This brother said he got a seven point vision to make. That's fine. That vision is only for the water. 
but what is for the peoples. Our kids got to eat. She said you got five hundred forty some thousand dollars for potholes, but she didn't say you got five hundred some dollars to move the trees that fell down in the city. We got young men, young women that are getting out of school and sometimes have nothing to do. When I came up, we had jobs for us to do. Y'all councilmen sitting up here wondering what you're going to do. Figure out what you're going to do in each council ward you're into. What can you bring back there? You're not bringing nothing back there. Y'all taking away. Give these young people something to do here. Quit bidding amongst each other. Work together. If you learn how to work together, this city would grow. When y'all keep saying what you can't do, what you can't do, you don't want to do it. Amen. What do you want to do in this city? Amen. You want to see this city tear down for someone else to come back and take a dozer and, and rebuild it. Amen. Why are we going to let somebody else come and build and we can build it ourselves? Right. We can do all those things that need to be done. I know it can be done. Back in 1972 when the potholes were fixed, when the curves and sidewalks had to be fit, all the works came inside of Flint, not on our skirts. Right. We can't let our dollars go on outside. Right. We need to keep them here. We don't keep them here, we won't have nothing. Emergency manager, what you need emergency management for? Because y'all don't want to do your job. Amen. Y'all job is to advise jobs for the city. Amen. You put you in the council with reason for what you get on the telephone and see what you can bring back here. Y'all want to get up there and see how good you can look. I don't care how good you look. <laughs> bring things back here. The goodness you can look at home when you're walking down the store with your husband, your boyfriend, whatever. That's when you look good. But when you're on the job, right. bring something back here. Right. Call on the phone. Hey, you like to come to Michigan, we got a building for you. We give you this for a period of three years, but after three years you got to go. But you all let all the furnace come here. They keep telling y'all they paying tax. Ain't paying tax, but they the mob they kick each other out the mob and put the cousin back here. You don't pay for the next two years, keep on living. But that's the way Michigan go. I have to pay it, why shouldn't they have to pay it? Courtney, you're talking about money that made it would have made here, but you're giving it away. You know, you're talking about lawsuits in the city of Flint. The lawsuits in the city of Flint cost the city being more death than anything else in the world. They talk about everything else, but they're not talking about the lawsuit allowing the people to sue the city of Flint for no reason. It costs the negative you're doing in your business often. Fine for no reason. Then hiring them back and giving them back pay for 10 years, back pay, bringing them back. That's taxpayer money that you're giving back to them. That you could be sending a young man to school, tearing down schools, not building nothing back for them. What do we want young men to do today? Stand on the corners? or go to school to be able to work in our city. If y'all don't get together, <laughs> we ain't gonna have nothing. As long as y'all keep running around here talking about who do this, who do this, who's in the back office, that's fine, they stay in that back office. That's where you need to stay at. <laughs> if you're gonna go back in the back office, this young man and ask him what he's gonna do, his job is made. You gotta study paying him. He's gonna make his dollar. Please sum up. We need to do what we need to do in this city and get our minds back what God told us to do. Only this city, not yourself. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Mr. Quincy Murphy. Mr. Murphy. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Quincy Murphy, and um, I want to talk to you guys about a couple of things tonight. One, I just want to go back and piggyback on the committee meeting that we went, was in um, concerning the economic development. Um, as you know, you guys had three criteria for the um, community development block grant. One was new housing, the other one was housing, and the other one was education. As you know, Garfield School been closed in our neighborhood, um, Bryant, Bunch. Um, so when it comes down to us being able to get some dollars for some education dollars over there in our neighborhood, we, we less likely to get some. When it come down to new housing in our neighborhood, we less likely to get some. When it come down to housing renovation, we less likely to get some. Reason I know that, because y'all awarded me a grant for $108,000 two years ago. It was called neighborhood stabilization because our neighborhood was targeted as one of five neighborhoods to be able to be eligible for housing rehab dollars. But once we got the dollars, they took it back and moved it south because they said um, it, they couldn't sell it. So if we applied to get two houses rehab out of probably 5,000 houses that need to be rehabbed in the neighborhood, that means we less likely to see any community development block grant dollars in the near future. 
When I look down my street and ride around in our neighborhood, all I see is massive amount of blight all over the place. And maybe I'm just the only one here tonight that um, understand that our neighborhood need more than just the land bank, more than just the clean and green. We need, we need emergency help. We got an emergency manager, we need emergency help. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, I've been working with this for, since Johnny Tucker was here. So this is how long I've been in the game. So it's, it ain't too many things you can pull over me that make me be like, okay, yeah, okay, well, I agree with that. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with nothing. All I agree with was right. And what's right is that y'all come in our neighborhood and do what y'all can to bring back our neighborhood and clean it up because it look, uh, it's a disaster. It look a hot mess. I mean, you got um, vacant lots. The land bank come and clean. So I followed them. I did this for the last two years. They, they, I said, well, why y'all not cleaning the whole fence line up? It's all of y'all out here. Y'all got the equipment. Y'all got the manpower. And y'all getting all the dollars. So if y'all go come in our neighborhood and clean up, we want y'all to clean it up right. We don't want y'all to come and halfway clean the vacant lot and clean half of it and leave the other half left. And then the next year, y'all do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And for years, y'all been doing the same thing. We've been getting the same results. And then when it, at the end of the day, we still ain't getting our neighborhood cleaned up. Y'all come and um, touch the surface, but y'all don't um, solve the root cause of the problem. The ne Buick moved out. People moved out, they abandoned their houses, the Bureau didn't give us no money to clean the neighborhoods up. Y'all been moving community de development block grant dollars in areas that y'all feel need to be stabilized. So that means we don't get no dollars. Y'all got 3.1 million for demolition, but then y'all told us it was around buffer areas. So that means it was around schools that, um, schools that were still open. So if that means it was around schools that were still open, that means Bryant School wasn't eligible for none, Burnt School wasn't eligible for none, Godfield School wasn't eligible for some, and um, what's that over there by you? Merrill School. All of those areas was not uh, eligible for the, these this $3.1 million for demo. Then you come around with this $20 million. So when you came with the $20 million, you, you pick and choose the house that you wanted to demolish because you, you, it's 10 houses on one street need to be demolished, but you t pick two and leave those other eight. So that means you um, skip it. We need to reevaluate what we're doing. <laughs> Mr. Mr. President, Mr. President, point Mr. of information. I'm How many speakers we got no. left? How many speakers we got left? Point of information. We have four. about four, five four. speakers five. left. Five. Five. Mr. Chris Del Moroni. Mr. Moroni. Thank you. My name is Chris Del Moroni. I live in Flint, Michigan. Again, I am going to appeal to uh, our emergency manager that he go after the uh, revenue that, can, that is being collected by the Downtown Development Authority on the parking meters and the tickets in Flint, Michigan. That is our money, it is the people's money, and it can be used for people's services, for city services. There is no sense in this world it, at this time for the Downtown Development Authority to be collecting money off of parking meters and parking tickets and then using that money in inappropriate ways during our recession in this city. And, and by inappropriate ways, I mean setting off fireworks and doing festivals downtown and everything else. The money needs to go into the neighborhoods and collecting that revenue will go a long way to helping those in our community. Um, there are some bad things going on in our community right now. And I'm not talking about our children being murdered in the streets, our women being raped, our homes being broken into. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about things like no bid contracts. Uh, I'm talking about like $100,000 uh, that the Genesee County Commissioners approved for a study. Well, that money went to a, uh, an individual's company, which is involved with Uptown and other, other business ventures in our downtown area. $100,000 without a bid, that is terrible. 
Now, we need to ask ourselves, why is the financial manager here in Flint, Michigan?